Hey everyone, and welcome to another Game Explained discussion. I'm your host, Derek Bittner, and I'm joined today by Ash Polson to discuss his recent hands-on time with the upcoming Switch indie games Owlboy and Fay. So let's get started. Alright Ash, so at the same event that you got to try out Bayonetta 2 and Kirby Star Allies, you also had the chance to play both Faye and Owlboy, uh, but the embargo for these just lifted, so that's why we had to wait a bit on these discussions. So I know you're a big indie game guy, and uh, why don't you start, it off, start us off with Faye? How is Faye? Faye, you know, I, I don't really have a whole lot to say about it, because I didn't play it for that long, and it, it was very much a different kind of demo, because uh, you know, there was no capture allowed, they, they sent us B-roll instead, and it was very much a guided kind of like, you know, I had, you know, a rep kind of standing over my shoulder, kind of telling me where to go and, and what to do. And that's fine. That happens, you know, sometimes in game demos, but it didn't really allow me to get a real sense for what, you know, for how I feel playing the game by myself. But basically, you know, w what you saw in the trailer in the direct is kind of what I did. I, w I was wandering around this, uh, what I believe is a Nordic forest. I think it's supposed to be like inspired by a, a Nordic forest. And you're kind of wandering around and you're trying to communicate with various flora and fauna. And the way you do that is kind of interesting. You basically sing. Like, like basically your character can interact with certain elements of the game world by singing and, and trying to find like a harmonization with whatever they're trying to sing with. And the way that's done, it's kind of interesting, is once you try to sing with something, or to something, I guess, you have to slowly tilt the switch or the Joy-Con, I guess, if you're playing in, in uh, TV mode, to kind of harmonize, to, to like harmonize your rhythm with what you're singing to. And you can tell if you're succeed succeeding or not by what the wavelength looks like. And it's not very difficult to do. It's not like there's a huge focus on trying to get that right. But it's kind of unique and kind of an interesting way to interact with the world. But Despite that, it didn't feel like, you know, when I would sing and interact with, like, something that would open up platforms, it didn't feel like something crazy new and unique, because really, it's just another way to do what you would do in another 3D platformer, you know, open up new platforms to get further, or get rid of some hazard that's, you know, blocking your forward progression, something like that. So, even though what you're, the, the act of what you're doing is a little different from other games, the ultimate result of those actions are kind of similar to what you might find in other 3D platformers. Okay, so it's a 3D platformer, you're going through the levels, harmonizing with different things. Is is there a certain goal, or is it just sort of get to the end? That's the thing, is I, they, I wasn't really clear on that, because I, I didn't encounter a single enemy during my playtime, so I actually had to ask the rep if there are, you know, can you even, is there a game over state? Is there a failure state? And the rep said yes, there is, and, and that there are enemies, so... I assumed that what I was going through was maybe like an early tutorial type area, and yeah, and so like I said, the demo was very uneven because like, there's no combat, no, you know, I don't really feel like I got a total scope, you know, total sense of what's, of all what's going on in this game in terms of the, of the game's overall scope. But I get, to, I did get to explore, jump around, harmonize with a few things, and I do like the art style in terms of how you know it's very kind of dark and brooding with these gorgeous things that are just like illuminated and lit up all around you. Which again, if you've seen the trailer, you know what I'm talking about. But you know, beyond that, I didn't really get a sense for what the overall purpose is or what the what the point is. What I what I do recall is that the rep said uh, that they really recommend players who are interested in Fade that they play with headphones because it's very much supposed to be a musical experience because you're harmonizing with everything around you. And I did play with headphones, and I could see what they mean. But again, you know, I had to play with one headphone kind of half off so I could hear. I mean, it just wasn't immersed in it like you're probably meant to be when you're playing a game like this. Yeah. Now, fortunately, at home, you do have those headphones that you love to use when gaming. So <laughs> this is, sounds sort of right down your alley. Well, you know, I thought that too when I first saw the trailer during the Direct, and I'm not, like, writing it off or anything, but I... I have to say it was probably the least memorable game I played at that event, in, you know, in terms of just, it kind of came and went, it was it was very much a guided demo, and I don't know, it, it didn't really stick with me all that much, it, it, it was not, it wasn't not fun to play, it just didn't really stand out in any way to me, and I have to say there were some pretty significant performance issues too, the frame rate really, really took a dive multiple times throughout my session. Now I did notice, or I, I did note uh, that the rep told me that I was playing on an earlier build, and that the... You know, the latest build is much smoother and more stable, but of course I can't confirm that myself. And, you know, I have to say, the graphics on display, they were fine, but they weren't so crazy that I expected performance problems or that I could, you know, see why they would be happening. So, yeah, it, you know, it wasn't exactly the most graphically impressive game, but there still were performance issues as well. And I just have to take it on faith that the latest build is a lot more stable than what I played. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it almost sounds like this demo didn't 
really do the game a lot of favors? <laughs> you know, I don't think it did because I, I don't really think they presented it in the right context. Again, it's, it's a game that you're, that you're meant to be immersed in, yet, you know, and they give you headphones, yet you have a rep talking to you the whole time, kind of telling you where to go, directing you what to do, and... You know, I, I understand the need for that, but at the same time, it didn't really give me a chance to really, really dive into it and get a sense for what this game offers or, or what it's really trying to do. Like, again, I still don't know what the ultimate goal of it is. But, I mean, it's still, it's certainly unique in terms of its overall look, its inspiration. Again, the fact that you're harmonizing with, with nature around you as opposed to just going up to something and pressing A to activate a switch. So there is cool things going on here. I just don't know what it's all coalescing into. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like we'll just have to wait and see how the full game ends up because yeah, it's hard to determine, determine based off this little preview event. That might be just more on them than anything. So hmm. yeah, I mean, at the same time though, it isn't. It, it is a new 3D platformer, and those aren't exactly the most. You know, I true. mean, they're they're kind of coming back in vogue, but they're not still that common. So that's kind of exciting. Just you know, in terms of being a fan of 3D platformers, but again, I don't know exactly how the game itself is going to shake out. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, yeah. well, let's go ahead and move on to Owlboy, which is something I have played before on PC yeah. and always took as something I think you would actually really enjoy. So I'm curious whether my hunch is correct. You are 100% right. I, I definitely enjoyed it, and I love the look of it. I didn't enjoy it in the same way that I thought I would because, you know, it the, the controls take a little getting used to in, in the sense that Otis himself, Otis being Owlboy, the main character, he, you know, he flies and he carries his friends around, he carries things around, but he himself isn't really offensive like most platforming heroes. He, he, can, he has like a really weak wing spin attack, but it doesn't really do much in terms of damaging enemies. And your actual offense comes from the friends that Otis carries, which I thought was a really interesting twist. So his friends have different kinds of like firearms, and, and so you can just shoot bullets with his friends while you're carrying them. But once you set them down, you can't attack anymore. And so th this leads to some really interesting environmental puzzles where you have to figure out, you know, what you're going to carry and, and activate switches and stuff, but also have to, you know, worry about fending off enemies. And and I think later in the game, I didn't, I only played a small snippet of it, but I think later in the game, Otis gets multiple friends that you can switch out who all have their different kind of, diff their own kinds of guns and bullets and ways they attack enemies, which it's, it's a pretty interesting twist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I describe the gameplay as a sort of a mix between a twin stick shooter with how you can, with the way the combat works, and, you know, basically each ally is a different weapon type that you can yeah. use, uh, combined with a Metroidvania, because this is a big interconnected world. Not in the right. same sense you gotta constantly revisit, it's almost like, here's this interconnected world and you can go into it and go through this section. So. It's it's hard to say exactly how it all turns out, but I did enjoy it. I didn't. I don't think I got as enamored with it as other people, but I do see it as a very worthwhile game to try out if you're interested. Yeah, I got the sense that uh, in terms of, of it being like a Metroid style game, I got the sense that it was more Metroid Fusion inspired in yes. the sense that yeah. So like there are specific. It, it's mostly linear progression, but the specific areas you go to have different places you can explore, but you're still on a overall a forward progression and you're not necessarily backtracking all the time to you know, previous areas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a very good way to put it. God, the, the, the look of the game is just so striking. It, it looks beautiful. Some of the best pixel animation around. I really liked what I heard of the music, although to be fair, that wasn't much. <laughs> and I got to really call out the writing because the writing was exceptional, at least from what I saw. Very humorous, very touching when it needed to be. I'm a recovering copy editor, so I'm always looking, you know, for, for mistakes and little things like that. I didn't find a single one, at least not in the demo I played. And I, I even said that to the guy doing the demo because he was from the from Owlboy's developers. And I said, look, I just want you to know you're talking to a recovering copy editor and I'm, I look, even if I'm not trying to, I look for mistakes in, in text and I didn't find a single one. So hats off to you for, for doing that right. <laughs> and, and, and the writing is just full of heart. I can see Otis's story as being one that I could really get behind because he seems like he's kind of a misfit, kind of trying to prove himself and, uh, you know, become the hero that he needs to be and that's that's always a you know underdog stories are always easy to get behind and that seems to be what's going on here and uh, like i said I, I really only played like a small snippet so i don't know the overall context of what's happening but i did get to play the opening and there does seem to be kind of like an underdog story going on where otis the main character has to prove himself to a lot of other owl kin who don't really believe that he's got what it takes mm -hmm. yeah there's a surprising amount of darkness 
to this story, and you can even see it right from the opening. Yeah, the opening is crushingly depressing. Like, yeah. Oh my god. There's points where it doesn't really let up. I mean, there are some humorous moments. There are, like, it tries to balance that as best as they can. And I can be enamored with it. I, I was very enamored with it as I went through. But I, I never fully clicked with the game. Like, I really okay. enjoyed it, but it wasn't that... Like, I like based on the visuals, you'd think, man, this looks like it would be amazing, and I can't wait to play more of it. And that definitely happened visuals-wise, but there's always something a little bit holding me back from it. So I'm actually, like I said, I'm very curious how, like, where you'll end up on this game, because I assume you'll probably pick it up as soon as it comes out. Yeah, I mean, I, I was planning on it, and I do know what you mean. I mean, there's a bit of a learning curve, and it, it, Owlboy is not quite as, you know, immediately inviting in terms of pick up and play mm -hmm. like you might think it would be just looking at it. It's not exactly the kind of game where you can just pick up and play and know exactly what you're doing and feel confident. Like, there is a learning curve to Owlboy, again, because he's not your typical platforming hero. And it's actually kind of funny, because I just finished reviewing Dondara, and neither is she, because she doesn't <laughs> run or jump. She leaps from surface to surface and doesn't care about gravity. Whereas Owlboy, you know... He, again, has completely different mechanics. Like, yeah, he can run and jump, but then there's the whole flying mechanic. And really, even more than that, there's the whole carry mechanic, which is what's so central to Otis as a character. It's like you really have to kind of wrap your head around, okay, you need to carry your friends so they can attack. You're not attacking yourself, and you have to kind of always be mindful of what what might be lying around in the environment that Otis can pick up to, you know, there might be a barrel that you can throw to knock down a wall or something like that. And it's not exactly, you know, that's not the kind of thing that you'd normally be worried about when playing a platformer. So it definitely does its own thing, but I can see what you mean in terms of it maybe not quite clicking fully with you because there's definitely a bit of a learning curve to kind of get into it, I think. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I didn't get a chance to look at your full footage, but did you get a boss fight in there at all? or is it? Did I you... didn't, unfortunately. Okay. I would have loved to. No boss fights, but what I did get to, to see were these really interesting kind of interstitial scenes, like you know, in like campfire scenes, where you can rest and then you can actually choose one of the characters in your party to have a conversation with, and you can choose what you talk to them about. So if there's a specific character in your party that you want to learn more about or get more of their backstory, you can specifically choose to go rest at a camp at a campsite and have a conversation with that character and ask them about what you want to know about, which is really cool in terms of the optional character development that kind of enables so and this is all stuff that you can skip too if you don't if you're just in there for the action for the for the gameplay you don't care about these characters that stuff is all completely skippable but the uh the developer on hand who was doing the demo told me that the inspiration for these kind of campfire scenes where you that are all focused on character development was actually chrono trigger and and its famous campfire scene which just so happens to be like my favorite <laughs> scene of all time in any game period and i'm like wow you're using that as an inspiration for these really cool bits of character development. I can totally see what you're going for, and I really appreciated that. I thought that was really cool, and I like that they're taking such a story-heavy, kind of character development-heavy angle with this game. Yeah, it is It's. It, it is so well-crafted. Like You can see why it took so long for the game to come out. It's, I'm so happy it's kind yeah. of getting ported beyond the PC, because it is something like... Say what you will about it, it is something I feel like people should be able to experience as best as they can, no matter what they might own. And it being on the Switch, and I believe the PS4 is, is great for it. It might, It's probably coming to the Xbox One as well, if it's coming out on those two. Right. But yeah, it, it's great to see. So what else did you get to see in the demo? Is that pretty much cover it with just a little bit of combat, a little bit of exploration, yeah. some story stuff? That kind of covers it. I did get to a minor side quest where I saved like an NPC that was trapped in a pit and I, I guess there there are a bunch of these guys like they're a, a race of characters in the game mm -hmm. who are you know kind of dog penguins if I, th I think I guess they are Something dog like penguins that. and they're used as like slave labor and it's you know it's kind of sad it's a little but and these guys just really can't do anything on their own without help so they're kind of like the lowest species on the food chain but they're also really cute and you kind of feel bad for them so I rescued one of those guys I did so just getting a little preview of a side quest there and uh, I you know I, I basically explored parts of different dungeons and you know it, it was a kind of demo where you'd load up one save file and you know you'd be run through what the, what the developer wanted you to see in that save file. Then you quit back out to them and you load up a different save file a little further in the game so I could check out a dungeon. It was that kind of thing. So it was a scattershot approach of different parts of like a couple of dungeons and just light puzzle solving, light combat, no intense boss fights or anything like that. Um, I did get to shop a little so I, I bought a new hat. 
uh, <laughs> just to see what the shop system was like. And I, again, I got to see that campfire scene. And I saw the, the entire opening cut scene. So I, again, I got the sense of just how crushingly dark the uh, Owlboy story can get when it wants to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's pretty great. And you talk about those guys being lowest rung on the food chain. Just immediately reminded me, even when I played the game, of the Prinnies from Disgaea. Yeah, <laughs> they, yeah, they totally actually do that. remind me a lot of the Prinnies, yeah. And uh, they're they're super cute, but they're also kind of super incompetent. You just <laughs> can't help but feel bad for them. Yeah, just a bit. But, yeah. uh, well, any other final thoughts on Owlboy? Only that you mentioned how long the game took or to come out and, and you know the, how long the development period was. And I only find it interesting because as I was uh, watching the opening cutscene, the developer was talking to me about how the the opening cutscene and really Otis in general serve as kind of like a an example of what the devs themselves went through and how and how, you know, Owlboy at first felt like such an impossibly huge project and a huge game to complete. And I guess that's supposed to be reflected in, the, in, in what Otis goes through in the opening and his nightmare. Mm-hmm. And just kind of... So and I thought that was interesting. Like, they're, they're at least partially Owlboy's story is reflective of what the developers themselves went through trying to make this game. And it doesn't sound like it was easy. And that doesn't surprise me because game development is never easy. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I just I found that to be quite interesting. Very cool. All right. Well, I think that covers it for our Switch preview discussion. So thank you for watching. And if you like this video, be sure to like us on Facebook and Twitter at Game Explain. And of course, make sure to subscribe to Game Explain for more on Switch indies and other things gaming as well. Until next time. Bye. <laughs>